Hello, hello. We are continuing with uh, our book club and Honorverse in particular on basic stations today. Two chapters, chapter 20, 23 and 24. Uh, before we start, I would like to share my screen and show you a Quizlet that Jihan made. And this is a flashcard. <laughs> and what I like, especially like about this, so uh, Jihan put some uh, sentences oh, yeah. from the book there and just yeah. miss the uh, world. So I found this, you know, fantastic. So <laughs> it's a good material for learning. So please use, it's, you know, provided by courtesy of Jihan. <laughs> I also like that technique, Jihan. Very, very interesting way to do it. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> okay, so we are ready, right? We just, oh, what happened in the previous chapter? Who can summarize? What was previous chapter about? Tricky question, right? I quote. Well, that's eons <laughs> ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I remember that uh, uh, Kaufman Carter visited Honor. Uh -huh. um, yep. What else? So they are actually. McKeon and Honor. McKeon and Honor, exactly. Yeah. So they, they found kind of common language. What else? What? Catharsis, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Alexander, Hamish and his brother. Hamish and his brother, right? So we have this conversation. Okay, so it was in the past chapters, now chapter 23. And who are characters here? Matsuko, Stale, Countess Marisa of New Kiev. Oh, do you know this town, Kiev? Yes. Where is it located? In Ukraine, right? A new key, where is located? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, new key sounds American. Officially, do you have new key? Say again? <laughs> so new key sounds like an American town to me. You know, you have Moscow, oh. Paris, I know. We don't use Russian names much other than St. Petersburg. Uh, I don't know any Ukrainian or Russian names that are common for towns in america kiev we actually we used to spell it k-i-e-f yeah kiev yeah and uh i think after crimea i think that maybe that was the russian spelling i'm not sure but after crimea they changed it to k-i-e-v i, -E -V. I yeah. was unaware of that until i read it recently yep yep they changed the spelling so it's happened from time to time i read that uh beijing the capital of china was called different in past time yeah, we used to call it Peking, <laughs> and when the communists took over, they changed it to Beijing. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> geography is uh, always a subject of politics, so we yeah, all yep. change, change these names. <laughs> There's an old movie, the title is 55 Days in Peking, right. <laughs> and I remember the first time I read that title, I went, 55 Days in Peking? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I found out later that was the name of the old name for Beijing, Peking. Yeah. Uh, actually, we still use Peking, so we we, we really? know, yeah, it's a new wow. city. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. And uh, for three days ago, I read uh, the article about Turkey. Uh, Turkey uh, plans to uh, change the spelling Turkey because uh, it's a similar Turkey in the uh, seven sin given day and uh, oh, the, future, the animal. <laughs> uh, they don't, they don't want to be called turkeys. The future, they plan to... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, Yvonne, can you zoom bigger so that there's no white space on the edges for my eyes, please? There we go. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, new Kiev. Okay. Isvarian Barney Major. Oh, what is special about Isvarian? He was very experienced, right? Yes. And he was in. <clears throat> Organization on the system. Yeah, he was an elite, right? An elite soldier. Elite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Papadopoulos, a Greek captain, kind of, uh, who is, works with his variant, McKeon, Elster, right? You know all of them. Okay, let's go to the questions. And we start with number one. One. Jiha, please. Uh, why did the Countess Nuki pay a visit to Dame Estelle? 
Um, the main idea of this visit is to turn the screw on, um, on her, to remove honor um, from the Medusa system and from the basilisk terminus. Uh, but uh, the way that Countess Nuki uh, asked her to do this was like in an indirect way, and it wasn't harsh as it's supposed to be. Yep, yep. And what does it mean Countess? Mm, it's like a rank, I guess. Yeah, so this, uh, how we call them? Pre uh, noble family, right? Countess. Mm -hmm. Nobility, yeah, nobility. <clears throat> Arist Arist aristocrats, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know what to, what to add there, actually. So it was a demand, and demand was refused, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she couldn't, she didn't demand. As Jihan said, it was indirect, and it was suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Fatima, would you like? The next question. Yes, please. Uh, what was the result of the visit? Uh, Dame Stell, uh, she made it clear to the accountants that uh, Honor was doing a, a good job, uh, especially that she has exposed many um, illegal activities that were happening in the system. And uh, she, she also mentioned that she's, she, um, she will get her back or she will support her. She'll have have her back. She'll have her back, yeah. Yeah. It, it a, go ahead, go ahead. It reminds me of an old saying. In Russian, we say, to make a diamond, you need a coal and a lot of pressure. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah. okay. So the more pressure is on honor, the more <laughs> significant your... Uh, like <laughs> her feature is in the in the story, right? So I think let me see. I don't think a question covers it. So let's talk about New Kiev, uh, the Countess, just a moment. So she's one of the leaders of the liberals. They hate the navy. They want to get out of Basilisk Station, abandon the system, and just leave it empty. She's their leader. That's what she wants. So for honor to be there showing that bad things are happening and Navy control is important, she hates that. So she went there to try to get rid of honor so the liberals wouldn't look bad in their position that there's no reason to be there. But she has this position in Basilisk Station as a compromise with the conservatives. The conservatives wanted to stay there. The liberals did not. So what happened was when they annexed Basilisk Station a long time ago, the liberals said, OK, we'll let you annex it. But our party leader is in charge of that system, oversees the system. So because of political deals, the countess is kind of in charge of the Basilisk Systems Administration, okay? However, another condition was they gave her that position in the government, but she has to follow the government's policies. She's got to follow the government's position. So if the government says honor is doing good, she has to say honor is doing good. She can't officially contradict the government's position on anything or she will lose her job and be fired so she's kind of a yes man in that regard so the government made it clear they support what's going on in basilic station they support honors activities so she herself cannot officially say anything against that position or the government will fire her for violating her responsibilities to the government. So she went there and she couldn't say get rid of honor because that's against the government's position. So she kind of, you know, well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people are complaining about what's going on here. 
it would be nice if, you know, we could get rid of these complaints. So she was trying to get rid of honor without saying get rid of honor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like this beginning. It will be nice and then you will, <laughs> and then you will hear, uh, hear a demand after this. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Dame Estelle kind of rubbed it in her face and said, not only will I not get rid of her, I'm going to support her 100%. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> One question. Uh, who appointed Dame Estelle? And is, is she a conservative? Um, no, she's, yeah, she's a conservative, basically. She, uh, I'm not sure how, I don't think it said how she got appointed. I think yeah, I'm not sure who put her in charge. Mm -hmm. They're probably the government because she's a conservative. So she believes in what they're doing. So she's got to be a conservative party person. So she was probably put there by the queen herself. And and also here looks like uh, Hampton, the, this guy from the cartel guy, this wealthy guy is supported by the liberals. You know, usually uh, wealthy people like, like him are supported with conservatives, but not by the liberals. But in this case... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so when all of this started happening, they started realizing that, whoa, this guy's helping the liberals. Whoa, this guy's helping the liberals. Whoa, you know, the liberals got a lot of support in, in unexpected areas. So some <laughs> surprises came out of all of this, this uh, official question uh, event. They found out that a lot of people were secretly supportive of the liberals trying to make trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can read now chat, have her back, right? It, it means to protect, to support. I, I, yeah, sometimes we'll say, I got your back, but I have your back, I've got your back. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay let's go further. Uh, number, did we cover number three, number three? Um, I don't think so. Shaima, would you like to take number three? Oh, I guess I kind of accidentally answered that, but we can answer it again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, number three. What did Honor learn from them still about the country's new care, a current position in the government, and her political uh, influence at the moment? Yeah, them still um, explained to Honor that the liberals now found themselves in embracing situation, uh, which is based on the country's in hot water. Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. We should place on the contest in hot water, uh, a lot of uh, trouble. Now, New Cap is one of the leaders of the opposition and held her uh, present for a uh, post only because the Ministry uh, for Medicine Efforts was traditionally uh, assigned to the Liberal Party as uh, or just uh, an exhibition fight. I like this expression um, in Parliament. Uh, there were limits to how far from the government line she could stray without losing her position. So um, uh, uh, she had a straightened message in order to keep her job and the government, she had to obey the government position or to be fired. Yep, yep. Okay, so I think we covered this uh, twice <laughs> already. Let's, let's go further. Let's go to number four. Do we have a volunteer for this? Sally, please. Okay. Uh, what puzzled uh, Honor about the enemy's plans and the preparation that she had uh, observed so far? Okay, the first thing uh, that uh, they uh, their plot uh, against the NPAs um, uh, was unnecessary risk uh, that was done to insult the uh, the intelligence uh, of the NBA uh, and to be uh, uh, to show uh, arrogant and sneaky uh, and self confident. Um, on, uh, the other thing is um, uh, they were ob obsessive uh, uh, in hiding the secret lab. And the third thing is that uh, the lab explosion. Uh, showed the ugly side of the uh, bad guys and was done to provoke the MBA uh, authorities. Um, um, yeah, so, so yeah. They, they risked too much without 
foreseeable reason, right? So what was the reason for that risk is not understandable. Yeah, you know, when, I, just when, I, when I read this, I saw that real life is always like this, right? So the perfect plan, they exist only in the books, I guess. So when you look at the real life, all this, you know, spy operation, when we learn history about some secret operations, they, they all look pretty silly, right? So a lot of small incidents, a lot of strange solutions. So I, I was not kind of surprised <laughs> that the real plan is strange. And, and it makes sense in a way. I mean, at the, the first element being, well, let's say, let's say the second, uh, meticulous care. They hid the lab really well. Whoever was in charge of that was very detail oriented, very professional. He, he was told to make it secret and by God, he made it secret. The first element being risky and, and arrogant, maybe a different person was kind of in charge of the overall program and he wanted to rub their in, ingenuity in, into Manicor's face by, by doing something right under their nose and, and hiding it from them. And then the third part, the explosion, of course, that was Summerdale, remember? They didn't give Summerdale guidance what to do. So he said, well, by God, I'll, I'll cause as much damage to him as possible. So when different people are in charge of different parts, you end up with different levels of risk and smartness, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go through it. Right? Number five, anyone? Would you like to? No, I'm sorry, I don't remember the third chapter. What the, what, so it was a owner just pondering about this plan, right? So she was making hypothesis why enemy uh, did something this way, right? What are they trying to do? Yeah, what is their goal? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Jihan, please. Jihan, to save the day. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, owner was like confused, um, like doing all of this uh, couldn't be about drug smuggling or arming the, the natives there. So there must be something, um, uh, a real and big reason for it, like maybe push them to riot and uprising. Um, so they trying like to get the NPA of the planet or from the, of the system, but it's still, it wasn't clear for her. Just like uh, she was trying to think about the reason. If I'm right, we will think about this more in the next chapter, right? Yes. Okay, so let's, uh, let's keep this. So she was worried about motives of the enemy, right? It's not clear yet. It looks like something, how we say, not, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, so, so something is not adequate, right? So the measures that taken not adequate to the plan in, in the mind of uh, owner at this point. Mm -hmm. We say things don't add up. <laughs> don't add up, yes, things don't add up. So you don't, I don't know, you don't kill a cow with a nuclear weapon, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay, number six. Oh, I remember you wanted number six. Okay. Explain the two ways that the Marines cover battle armor can be configured. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the two ways uh, of take like clothes. Uh, battle armor, right? It's, yes. Do you remember Starship Troopers? Yeah. So it's kind of the same, right? They have battle armor and it can be adjusted to one way or another way. Right? Yes. Uh, one of the ways that it is fast, but not very much. Because uh, uh, not many weapons, right? Yes. And uh, the other that it is very slow and uh, it have, has a lot of 
Uh, Nippon. Nippon. Yeah, so actually it's a, it's a trade-off, right? Or you fast and you have very like lightweight and a lot of energy, or it's different. You have, you look, look like a tank, right? You have a lot of weapon, but you your energy is enough only for four hours of battle and you have a slow speed, right? So you, and it's a trade-off and you can choose what to use in, in what battle. Am I right? Yep, exactly. Okay. It's kind of like uh, your cell phone. If you use it with a lot of apps open, it's not going to last very long. But if you put it on power saving mode and close down unnecessary apps, the battery will last a lot longer. So the same idea. So what what this armor is, it's kind of a, a metal framework or a metal suit that you wear over your body. You know, it goes along your arm, along your chest, along your legs, and it makes you stronger and faster. You can jump 20 feet in the air. You can run 60 miles an hour. It's a powered suit that enhances your body, but it uses power cells like batteries. So the more power cells you can carry, the longer you can run fast or do that or jump high or do things like that but then your weapons have to be kind of light and not very powerful. If you carry big, heavy weapons like missile launchers and, and huge machine guns, blah, 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 those things are heavy. So that carrying that's going to make your battery run down quicker. And then your suit will stop and you won't have, you can't use your suit anymore. So the suit offers protection and mechanical strength enhancement and they can configure it different ways. So if you want a recon scouting mission where you're just gonna go ahead and look and come back, you don't need heavy weapons to do that. So you can configure it so that people can move fast, move a long distance, look and come back. That's recon mode. If you're gonna be in heavy battle, you want the biggest guns you can, you can hold. So you wanna, and you're just gonna stand still and shoot. So you don't need to run fast and things like that in battle mode. So that's their two configurations. If you saw the yeah, Aliens speaking about, movie. Yeah. Speaking about connection to real life, you know, this exoskeleton, it's not a fantastic anymore. It's not a sci-fi anymore. We have Boston Dynamics, right? I, I saw these soldiers who move, you know, this much cargo with this exoskeleton, like really in movie Alien. So it's very mm -hmm. Yeah, if you remember the movie Aliens, the second movie at the end, she gets inside of a big mechanical machine. It's kind of like that. It's an exoskeleton, and she can lift huge, heavy loads and bang the alien sideways with big metal hands. That's uh, an ex exoskeleton, we call it. It's a hard skeleton on the outside of your body instead of on the inside of your body. Do you, do you remember Avatar? They use the same. Avatar, they had a big mm -hmm. bed of robots you put inside. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, the same. So okay. Okay? Yes, for information, in our plants, we use uh, exoskeleton, exoskeletons for moving uh, some heavy metals details from uh, wow. place to place. It's, a, it's, not, it's not fantastic. It's a usual device for, uh, for our plants. So really, just now in your plants? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's not sci-fi. We say it's not sci-fi anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we need another sci-fi from now on. Cool. Okay, and we have the last uh, question for this, uh, yeah, for this chapter. Sally, would you like to? Yes. After uh, Papa Duplos and uh, Esparian explained their uh, troop the, uh, deployment, deployment uh, plans, what change did Anna make and why? Okay, she asked them um, to um, deploy the MBA troops and Marines um, uh, on. Uh, uh, on the uh, HMS Fearless uh, instead of uh, on the planet. Um, and, and because that way uh, the troopers would be uh, uh, hidden 
and uh, they also can be um, deployed quickly to the planet if, if they want to. Um, uh, and why? It's because that uh, there is still an enemy spy inside the NPA, and um, this would tip the enemy if uh, they knew their plan, um, or they could uh, change their uh, their plan. So security of the operation was a challenge, right? I got it like you know when uh, they presented the plan to Honor. So the plan was good actually, but they needed like a week or 10 days to make all the preparations. And owner was concerned, you know, if you will do this for 10 days, you know, everyone can see this and it's it has zero security, right? So everyone will be prepared to your operation and it will not be effective. That's, that's how I got it. So if the enemy knows what you're going to do, they can change their plans and do something different to avoid your your plan. So, yeah. Same idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else we should say about this chapter? Remember, yeah. remember that in a previous chapter they raided the lab. Remember the secret lab, and the lab knew they were coming right. because when they got to the lab, everyone was gone, and it was booby trapped with an explosion. So someone in the NPA must have told the bad guys. They're going to raid the lab. So Honor is very, in, and Papadopoulos forgot that. But Honor remembered and said, well, wait a minute. There's one problem. Someone is in the NPA. They will tell the enemy what we're going to do. So what we do needs to be kind of secretive so that the spy doesn't know what our plans are. So that's why she decided to keep all the troops inside the fearless and she called all the pinnaces back so that she could use them to deploy all the troops at once if necessary. So now she's kind of hit, hidden, hiding their Marines inside the fearless. So now the bad guys and the spy don't know what her plans are. Where are the Marines? I don't know. I don't see the Marines anywhere. Right. Okay. So usually we usually give titles to the chapter. So my title for this chapter is uh, Honor Lecturing to Marines. <laughs> lecturing what? Lecturing to Marines how to plan the attack. Oh, okay. Lecturing the Marines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zika? Um, I would call it Act of War because they were preparing for the combat. Mm -hmm. Good. Maybe, maybe preparing for war, okay. <laughs> okay. So can we say that Gonor is a good strategist? Strategist? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Better than <laughs> the Papadopoulos, you know, the captain of the Marines and his variant. Yeah, see, there was one more element in, in this chapter that I didn't really put in the questions, but is variant and and Papadopoulos, they're Marines. You know, mm -hmm. they all they care about is get the troops there and, and kill the enemy. You know, their their uh, viewpoint or outlook or aspect of the battles limited to what their duties are. Their duties are to get there and kick ass. Honor worries about the bigger picture, and Honor's worried that. So so Papadopoulos said, so if they know what we're doing, so what? They won't take action. They'll stop. They'll go hide longer. To him, that's not a problem. If if they go hide, I don't have to fight them. Good, you know. But Honor's got another worry that he doesn't know about. Honor knows that the liberals are trying to get her out of the system. They're trying to get Young back into the system. So she's got a time limit. She's got to find out the enemy's plans and thwart those plans within the next eight weeks. So she's got a time constraint. She doesn't want them to go hide for two or three months. That will make the situation worse. She wants them to act and to catch them in the next eight weeks. So she doesn't want to discourage them. She wants them to come out and do their plan so she's there and can stop them. So she's got a bigger picture of time pressure and 
you know, the politics of getting young back there and making things worse. So the Marines don't know all of this. And it said in this chapter here, uh, Papadopoulos, he could tell that Honor wasn't telling him something. <laughs> so he knew that there was more going on that she was worried about that he didn't know about. But he didn't dare ask her what that was <laughs> out of respect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are ready to the next chapter, right? Yeah. Okay, let's let me change the synopsis. <laughs> so very few characters here, right? We already know about Webster somewhere. Communication officer, but who is the second one? Second one, Mark Guinness, right? Mark Guinness. And it's funny because Guinness, you know, is a giraffe. What is Guinness? You know? Uh, Beer Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Very famous. Do you know about the Guinness book or something? They have records. Record mm -hmm. book. Actually, have you heard about it? Oh, yes. It's very famous. <laughs> it's Irish. Irish. Yeah, but it's interesting because Guinness is Irish, but Mac is Scotland, right? So it's Mac Guinness. <laughs> Let's call it. Yeah, Mac is usually what Irish or Scottish. I, I always forget them, but one of those two. Yeah, both, both, both can be because both. they spoke the same language, Gaelic, Gaelic, Gaelic. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you'll see two prefixes. You'll see MC and MAC. They're both prefixes for family names in uh, Ireland and or Scotland. So when you see those names, you kind of know their background, their ancestors came from that area. And they like McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, I don't, know why he, I don't know why he named it McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go with the questions. And I like the first one about two set of eyes. <laughs> Any words? <laughs> So what does it mean to set of eyes? Uh, you know, this yeah. because Western, I think, has some influence. You know, the other Western that is an official uh, has an important chance in the, in the government. So he is young, and he sees things uh, with his position. And then he also the other point of view is uh, he knows because his family he will reach higher ranks. So. He's very attentive to to everything happens around him and for for the future. You know what officials do their job properly, like honor. Yeah. And he saw what McKeon did and the situation with Honor McKeon, and he now is aware that the situation has improved or it's almost fi fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking about parallels to real world, I remember when I was in my university, I had a free summer or something. And I spent this free summer working on low quality job. <laughs> so <laughs> just a lumberjack or something. And <laughs> at that point, I had two set of eyes. You know, I knew that this job for me just temporal, you know, one summer. So these guys around me, <laughs> I will not see them after <laughs> this summer, right? So <laughs> I was looking on this. I, I was thinking that I will be a scientist or something. But now I am a lumberjack in this position. And I really have two sets of eyes. So I look at them like on colleagues from one side, but from another side, I understand that I will overgrow this in, you know, in one month. <laughs> so it was... One yeah, question yeah. for you, Ivan. Yeah. When you are, you, you were lumberjack, you know, do you speak uh, your language in a register, low register? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I... I, I was using a lot of folklore and you know a lot of cursing, <laughs> just to be understandable, just to be the same level. <laughs> so when you're when you're when you're re, when you're a low level receiving orders, you want to learn to do your job well. So you've got to learn to follow orders well to keep your boss happy. But someday you know that you may be the boss and someone else will be in your position. So now you've got to be given the orders. So he's looking at receiving orders and learning from people that know more than him. He's also looking at, I need to know more than other people because later I'll be given the orders. So he's learning both the bottom part and the top part at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, Sergey, please. 
I, I wanted to add uh, some points about uh, two sets of eyes. And sometimes uh, this way uh, is very important because uh, you have to understand uh, your uh, colleagues. And sometimes you uh, would speak in front of uh, your colleagues and you have to uh, tend, stand out on the stairs uh, below for... Uh, share your ideas uh, among your colleagues and if you uh, if you will speak if you speak uh, in uh, academic uh, academic language <laughs> your colleagues uh, can't understand you and that's why you have to speak uh, the simple uh, you using simple words <laughs> yeah, look at look at trump right everyone understands him yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so a manager a manager's he's got a anything a manager does he's got to look at how will a customer view it how will his subordinates view it and how will the company executives view it so he's got to keep everybody happy so he's got to look at his actions with different sets of eyes yeah yeah, I think it's very important to, to, to be for a short period of time in the position of your subordinate to understand well what is happening on. When I was on my military service, I remember that uh, all the officers, at least in our army, they, they go like step by step from the lowest rank to the highest rank. And the one who jumped through the position, he has no respect in the society of the officers. It's like this guy is a spoiler tech. He, he, never, he will never understand. <laughs> yeah. And it used to be in our companies and corporations, the same thing. You would work your way up and someday you could be an executive. But <laughs> now we don't do that anymore. Now you can only get so high and that's it. The people above you will be hired from another company because they've got other contacts, other knowledge of the, the rivals, the competitors. So you can't work your way up anymore like the old days. Right. It, it's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the Webster's observation number two. Anyone? Sally, please. Okay. Uh, okay. What was uh, Webster observation about uh, McKean uh, and honor, uh, competence, uh, behavior, and uh, command style? Okay, he was uh, disappointed uh, uh, by uh, Commander uh, McKean uh, because he thought that he should help uh, Honor uh, achieving her goals. Um, but, um, and also he was upset uh, of Honor, uh, with Honor, uh, because he thought that she should uh, jerk McKean up um but uh, the way she approached the situation was uh, was much better um she she was quiet she took it uh, uh with uh, with calmness uh, she didn't raise her voice um and it was surprising to um to uh, Webster because uh, uh, um, in comparison to uh, other captains uh, who could uh, blast uh, easily uh, when anyone took, uh, took them, um, he felt that uh, her way was much better. Um, she, he was admired that uh, she, the way she maintained her distance from uh, her subordinate, uh, subordinate, uh, uh, but still um, uh, never let um, anyone forget that she was the one in charge. Uh, she and that made make her uh, uh, have a control over uh, them. Uh, she liked, he liked the way that uh, she uh, approached uh, Ref uh, Cardenas about finding uh, uh, the, uh, the answer to his uh, problem with the drones. Uh, he also admired that um, she knew everything about uh, all of them. 
for example, that uh, Cardinals like being called Raf, uh, while Webster himself hated uh, anyone calling uh, him Sam. Right, right. So she was, uh, to summarize it, she was very good as a manager, right, as an officer. So she knew, I, I, I remember it was written in the book, she was accessible for them, for everyone, for them, for their subordinates. And it's very important, right? So they know that they have support, they have a superior to to ask something. Yeah, I think it's very important. Yes. Yeah, some managers think you got to be your subordinate's best friend. You know, you always have to let them remember you're a, you're the boss and they're the subordinate. She kept that clear. You can come talk to me anytime, but just realize I make the decision. This is not a democracy. So she <laughs> was available, approachable, but it was clear that she was always in charge. <laughs> I'm not your best friend. I'm your uh, superior. This, you know, yeah. But it's a pretty usual problem for managers. You know, sometimes people, they tend to have you as a friend. They go to you, they went to you, and they speak about their personal problems, you know, something. So I have this and that, and please understand. And it's very hard to, to keep this line, you know, to professional life. So we are doing this together, and that is your personal life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and at the, and, and the, the, the same time, you have to be accessible, yes? Because if people don't feel that you are, you know, we call it seagull manager. Have you ever heard this term? Cigar seagull manager? manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seagull, you know, like a bird, like seagull. Oh, seagull, okay. Yeah. It means that you, you don't exist in the life of your subordinates, but from time to time, you are going there and say, where is my product? Where is deadline? Where is everything? And then you disappear. So we call it seagull manager. I guess because you hover on the wind, right? You're you're up here hovering on the wind. Yeah, but you know these girls, seagulls, they are wah 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 wah. Oh so yeah, they, yeah. They scream, scream. yeah. We call them with this one. Can we call them laughing seagulls? Because it sounds like they're going ah 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 ah. Yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Seagulls, seagull manager. <laughs> I like that. Okay, number uh, three. Anyone? Sergey? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe you did discuss about it, but uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Honor and McCone had a conversation after meeting with Hauptmann. And uh, during this meeting, uh, McCone helped to Honor uh, to save uh, this. Uh, uh, this site and after meeting uh, McCone, uh, McCone confessed uh, that uh, he had a problem. Uh, he didn't like uh, Honor so much. He didn't like his uh, her uh, methods or methods of uh, managing, and he wanted that uh, McCone had the problem and had the mistake because because he wanted to be a captain of this uh, of this ship and uh, i think it was a, a hard the decision of McCone because it's not uh, simple to uh, tell the story about uh, himself and uh, he opened uh, this uh, his mind. In my opinion, he was uh, coming out of uh, Macon because uh, people can't uh, can't save the problem inside inside themselves. They have to share their problem. They have to share their uh, humanity. And after this, after this, uh, the relationships between Honor and McCoon started to be uh, better, in much, much better, because they didn't have the cover things between them. Yep. Right. Yep. So they finally find, found a common language, right? Found a yep. kind of trade-off, a compromise, how we will survive. Now I respect you, now I give you what you deserve, and I know my place and let's cooperate and all those things. So the relationship was much improved. 
And she said, now I can, I can leave running the ship to him. He can deal with small problems, making the day-to-day -day routines. She was now relieved of that responsibility. She could depend on him to deal with all the small problems so she could focus on the big problems. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to this message traffic. <laughs> it was written, it was in the book, it, there was a bit about traditions, and I like this. Shaima, please. Okay, number four, what surprise was waiting uh, for him in uh, routine message traffic that webster had placed uh, at the end? Yeah. Uh, it was a, a routine dispatch from the CEO of Hemis, uh, uh, Hephaestus to Admiral Lady Lucy Denver. The captain, uh, Lord uh, Young's request a special refit to the work whiskey sale. Uh, so uh, uh, um, uh, um, she felt uh, uh, um, shock and uh, the Admiral uh, Warner's inspection team had confirmed it, uh, uh, it and um, which make their replacement a matter of uh, urgent priority. And this uh, necessarily mean, unfortunately, that uh, uh, all vessels uh, refit must be expanded, uh, extended uh, for a minimum of eight uh, more weeks in order to carry out the required installation. Finally, finally, your refit was approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this uh, decision will have a lot of consequences, I guess. Do you remember this heavenly public? They are waiting for young, right? So now they have to improvise. Now the circumstances change. <laughs> well, the, the enemy may or may not know this. We don't know yet, but it's good news for the conservatives. <laughs> they, they've got at least eight more weeks to try to bring the enemy out and find out what their plan is. Yeah. And I remember that eight weeks, it could be a good enough, fair enough uh, time span. Because do you remember there was a shaman who don't want to wait, right? So there right. Was, that was a problem to make him wait. So probably it will work. Also, they wanted her own station during the meeting next month about the official questions list. So they needed her to be in control in the system during that meeting so they could use their position of strength against the liberals. Yeah. Mm, okay, the last one, right? Number five. Anyone? Jihan, please. Uh, what two bits of news did Damasel wake on or up? about in the middle of the night. Um, the first thing, um, it's about a Medusan uh, chief. Um, he contacted Dame Cell before, telling her that um, he's heading to the south for the winter instead of the north because his relatives um, warned him not to come there. It's unwise. Um, but he didn't pass this information uh, to honor immediately. He had to wait um, till he got the second news um, when one of the, um, um, I think he's a nomad also, um, they found him at the gates, um, he collapsed. And when, he, when they took this man to the medic, um, they recognized some symptoms of the Mikuha. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the drug. He has drug poisoning. And also, um, they found in his uh, bag um, a bullet shaped lead projectiles, um, which is a warning like there's something dangerous, like to have, like this nomad having this dangerous bullet. There must be something behind it. You know, I like it another part in this. I like it the part that. Do you remember they, they call it, how they call it, strangers or off worlders, right? And there was good and bad. And I think it's the, mm -hmm. the key point, right? So now we know. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Now we know that for Medusian, not the off holders are the same. There are good guys and bad guys. And that probably it's probably a clue, you know, for who is the beneficiary of this uprising. So there is a one who is uh, preparing this as far as I understand. Why did they mention this point? Like, uh, did they mean that this nomad who collapsed, he's a good one, like came to warn them? Uh, no, no, he was, he was delirious. Mm -hmm. he, he was feverish. He was just ranting crazy words out. And he said, the holy Makoha, the holy Makoha, more, oh, many weapons, many weapons will kill the enemy. But, but not all, not all enemies. Some off-worlders are good. They're helping us. Yeah. So he was kind of ranting and raving, and they were kind of piecing together what he was saying. He, he wasn't really a good guy. He was one of the bad guys. He's on drugs, right? But he was just talking a lot because he was crazy. He was sick and out of control. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, interesting. So now we, we know that uprising is coming, right? So, and we know that there is a beneficiary or someone, some kind of organizer of this uprising. So it's, uh, it's getting more interesting. Sergey? So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting way to share Mikoha uh, between uh, <laughs> uh, these uh, people. It looks like uh, opium war in China when English uh, uh, English mariners share opium uh, among yeah. the Chinese people and Chinese people uh, regressed and uh, Eng English people had more more profit of it. Yeah, so it was a, yeah, probably, well, I, I don't see the parallel here, but yeah, it's kind of kind of a reference probably to the Sopian War. Could be so. Native uprising, yeah. Okay, guys, if you we, we finish it with the questions for this uh, chapter. If you have any questions, so it's time for you. We have a few minutes more, so we can answer anything if you don't understand something about these chapters. Um, I don't have a question, but uh, we didn't mention that um, in chapter 24, uh, they they started to suspect the heavens and maybe we will see like a conflict between them later they will have their crosshair on them yeah thank you Jahan. So, so, uh, uh, i'm waiting for chapter in this hell because it is uh, uh, interesting right yes not a multi-coin system in heaven system. yeah so who wants to see the heavens point of view i think uh, <laughs> this Admiral uh, uh, already had invent, invented the plan. Okay. Mans had, uh, mm -hmm. I think Mans had. Uh, yeah, so he had another plan. He had corrected his plan, right? About Medusa. Yeah, interesting. I, I remember Jihan just mentioned that they started to, to suspect heaven, but I like it that in the book it was. No, it's too obvious. It's not heaven. It's too obvious. All the, all the tracks uh, lead to them. So probably it's a, it's a frame, you know, someone else did this. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I titled this chapter Fortuitous Encounters. <laughs> they, they met two different Medusans from different areas just by chance. One guy said, you know, we were told don't go to the cities in the winter this this winter. This year, don't go to the cities. Not a good place to be. <laughs> and then this other guy, they found him, and he's ranting and raving about off-worlders. There's good ones and there's bad ones. And the holy Makoha will flow. The shaman will, you know, make uh, take us to heaven and all this. So they, they happened to meet two different Medusans, and they got clues from both of them. So now they have a little firmer picture that there's definitely an off-world plot to arm the natives and make them attack the cities. They still don't know the ultimate reason yet, but they know more certainly now what's going to happen, where it's going to happen, and fairly soon it's going to happen because they also heard that one shaman was impatient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 
So it's going to start getting a little bit more exciting in these later chapters. Right. You have to be prepared for action, guys. Right. That's right. <laughs> Keep your guns walk and loaded. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any questions? I'd just like to introduce Angela Jung. She's one of my new students in the group. Uh, Angela, thank you for attending. It's two o'clock her local time. So she's really, really dedicated to stay awake and be uh, to come to the, the uh, class here. So thank you very much, Angela. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Chichu. You have a lot. Okay, good. And don't hesitate, you know, to, to speak when you want. So we are... We are pretty friendly, you know, so we can. <laughs> it's not, 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 not a problem. Okay, so let's call today and see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye, bye everyone. Bye bye. bye.